That's why we're gonna give you a couple days. Yeah. Dad wants to know where Violet is. With me at town hall. Uh, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah. No, please. Mm -hmm. It's every place. Help today, remember. Uh, I know without Jeff. Down there. <laughs> Understand. I've never seen purple gloves before. Very unique. Oh, thank you. We don't have our landline anymore. You don't? No. So you're going to give me my cell phone so you can call me and Okay. Yeah, five three seven two seven six zero. And I got a nice pile. Okay. Like I say, I hurt myself this spring, but I got a beautiful pile. It's all it's black as could be, and it's all beautiful. So I'll keep it there for you. And in the spring, just give me a ring and I'll bring it up. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. You bet. You're welcome. Jim will be tickled. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you want me to call TJ? Did you call him? I haven't called him. Yeah, you can call him. Yeah, okay. maybe call him. <laughs> How are you? I know. It's rough. Right? Okay, thank you. Hi, Dave. That's a good question. How many other people are on the upcoming to it's So there's one, two, three, four, five. And we have three. We have a quorum for that. Okay. Now I have a finance committee agenda. Yeah, that's just so I. It's okay. On my list. Thank you so much. But I don't have a regular agenda. Oh, you want? Um, <laughs> Is it so that? Well, just okay. follow this. Yeah, you can follow that. But if you want, I can break down. Let me break down. Did your daughter buy a house on Orchard Street Oh, she did. Hey, I'll show you that. Hi there. I can go grab it. Are you printing it? Yeah. Four copies. One for you and three for the four. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Harold. That was the drive from uh, Dalton. Very dark and <laughs> scary. I've had uh, several new encounters with deer in the last few weeks. Oh, yeah. How'd you do it? Wow. Uh, it's TJ. Yeah. <laughs> Made it. Yes. I know.
The fastest is just the temper. Well, that needs to be seen here. Yeah. Yeah. They're there for a, a temporary emergency place for the reason. 18 months later, the reason. Okay, they're still there. That means no. You wanted to make the more of those permanent. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Well, you must be doing good things with it. In a lot of experience. <laughs> Cool. How are you doing, David? What? Not trying to stay out on this ship. There you go. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Are we missing someone? Jeff is not feeling well. Oh, no, that's no good. He's out today. Hmm. Let's see the dog got that glove. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially those labs. That's one very, very Oh, yeah. Things we have to look for these days. <laughs> and do what? The things we have to look for these days. Yeah, yes. it's the thing. Yeah. To me, and some some things have them, and some things don't. Some of them are the whole glove has the touch capability. <laughs> for multitasking. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably. probably. The meeting mess. Thank you. I'm not having Joanne here. I know. <laughs> She's, I'm, I texted, I'm really appreciating her. I texted her today by accident, and then I remembered that she was on vacation. I was like, oh, ignore that last text. And then I actually sent her another text that was supposed to go to someone else, and I was like, oh my God, I'm such a jerk. She's on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> and now I texted her three times. Yeah. Take a look at her whiteboard. <laughs> Where she usually has this like items for the select board. She says that she drew a ship and says, see you later. <laughs> Good for her. Yep. <laughs> All right. We're going, right? Yeah. Are we good? All right. You're uh, missing one trailer here for the cemetery. We have a flat trailer. Good to know. We'll, uh, we'll have to add that. Um, we're not opening for select so, board. We're opening for. So we're going to. It's appointing. Yes. I think everyone, everyone see a point in time. Start the meeting. Speak. Who am I going? No, nobody else from finance meeting, all right? Nope. <laughs> Just Kevin. Hmm. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, make a motion. You want to make a motion? We'll talk about it. Make a motion to appoint um, Kevin Green to finance committee. Is there a term or is it just. No? Is it Are we filling an open position? We're, we're filling, well, I don't know. Well, we have lots of open There's lots of open positions. Are you looking for this for three years? Sure. Till death do us part. <laughs> so for three years. Okay, for three years. Uh, is there a second? Does he know what he's getting into? Second for discussion. Oh, all right. I second. All do you right. know what you're getting yeah, into? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so um, I know Kevin's history and we've been sort of approaching Kevin for a while to ask him if he'd be interested. I don't know if anyone else needs to hear what, I mean, I think we all know what his um, uh, background is. You wanna give us a brief history of your finance background, Kevin, real quick? Well, so I have a have business a degree from Westfield State and I was a financial advisor with several different licenses for 32 years. And I retired um, April 1st from Westfield Bank uh, as one of the financial advisors. And I was the vice president when I retired. Nice. Great. 
So uh, have you worked with any municipal um, stuff ever? Just curious. I did a lot of deferred compensation uh -huh. plans for municipal or uh, government. Yep. And I did a lot of 403Bs, a lot of 401Ks, okay. a lot of pension plans. Cool. I think you'll find that um, we have a pretty organized setup here with meetings and whatnot. Um, the process was all outlined a couple of years ago. We've been trying to follow it pretty closely. So it shouldn't be too painful. Yeah, any information that you could give me that I could kind of get up to speed and stuff? I think, um, you, do you have a like that the outline? I think there was an outline drawing up a few years ago, like what, what month finance is doing what, basically. Um, that would be helpful for Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, you just update that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Perfect. So he'll send that your way. Yeah. And I did go on um, Mass Municipal Organization Association, mm -hmm. and they have a finance committee handbook that I was able to oh, good. get a hold of, and I've been reading that. Right there. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Hire him. <laughs> <laughs> Hire him before he changes his mind. <laughs> it's been a tough campaign. <laughs> All right, just now other questions or concerns. All those in favor, please send your friend thing. Aye. 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 Both hands. <laughs> Congratulations. Woohoo! Welcome Thank aboard. And now I a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> or or make that motion. Second. And you object them? Yeah. And adjourn. It's all, it's all to us. I think we have to wait eight minutes until we start. I just well, I posted this. Oh, so, so we're yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> all right. So TJ, did you read the yeah, double check? This is the one we're gonna approve. No, mine says November 14th. This is the agenda. Oh, for now. Oh, you haven't all right here. Um, we'll let them check. Yeah, okay, I'm going to hand it to you. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of November 14th, 2022, as written. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. You said I. All right. Audience participation. Anyone? No. All right. We're going to go to department reports. Yeah, I would recommend uh, taking Wright and Pierce out of order. Okay. New business. All right. So, um, motion to move to um, Wright and Pierce new business A SCADA upgrade report. You say second. you say second. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Question. Um, I have slides now. Could I plug into that computer? If, if you shoot me an email, I can pull it up on here if that's easier. Or uh, I actually have it on the on the drive. Oh, okay, perfect. There. Yeah. Does what water department? If you guys want to join us up here, you're welcome to. At the round table. Table around. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Just uh, open the house and then go to the e drive and I'll take a look. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could barely even see that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me try it. There. Why I can't. Sorry, I can't to get too. Oh no, no no. How's Wendy doing? Recognize. Good. Is she yeah. playing basketball this year? Yeah, nice. Nice. Good. With rec or with? Oh, wow.
with over the school now. I just she's saved a, to she it. She's an eight now. She's oh my yeah. goodness. Do like, you mind if I pull it out? Or... She now? She's oh no, just on. Uh... She stayed around there. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be safely in jail. Okay, put it out. Yeah. Let's try it one more time. Okay. All right. If you want, I can fire up my uh, computer and connect. Yeah. To that okay. yeah. Do they have them on the high school teams over there at Gateway too? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is a good learning experience. It's just a, a commitment. <laughs> Five days, six days a week. It's a lot. <laughs> The good old days. <laughs> They're still hot. We're good. Did it, it work, worked, Peter? It didn't work. Right. So, it didn't work. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if we should just move to a different agenda item. While Jim, are you are you almost set? No, go ahead. If you want to go ahead. I have to grab. Um, uh, do we want to table. talk? Okay. Do we want to talk about the shared water operator with Chester? Well, yeah, we're sure. Might as well. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, so I was just going to let everyone know. So we met again with um, Ira and also Eric Weiss from PVPC mm -hmm. on Thursday to talk about the grant application. Um, obviously, we we were awarded the $178,000 grant with Chester. Mm -hmm. um, we At the meeting, we're just talking about what the structure of the agreement would be. We went through that agreement, um, had some suggested changes. And I, I missed the end of the meeting, but I believe we ended up, uh, Ira's going to be sending it around to folks yes. um, to add additional comments in. So that's an opportunity for the commissioners to take a look at it. Um, you know, add any comments you have. Uh, if you don't like it, let us know and, and we can kind of work through it there. Give the, the MOU to show to uh, Copeland and Page or uh, going to send you one since we were the fiduciary of everything. Yeah, I can I can get them a copy. Yeah, yeah. Well, they want they want them to go over it. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Were there any dramatic changes? No, I think we were mostly just kind of working around the details of what Ira had put in there. You know, what what would be the structure of a screening committee be to actually hire these folks? Um, you know, how would how often would we meet to check in with Chester? Um, yeah, I don't. Brad, you were there. I don't know. Are there any other? Earth shaking things, yeah, yeah. Other than it, it came up, we were discussing, um, and I think you were a part of, of how how this would work with shared operators. We would both have to have a sense of what we would need, what our needs would be, as far as what Chester's needs were and what our needs would be. Um, Chester felt that they didn't think they needed an operator as much as we did. Um, we disagree. <laughs> um, but uh, the board, they, they, we've all talked about it, and we have our own concerns about things that we'd like to meet with Chester and explain and okay. all the whole thing. So right, yeah. So at this point, the devil's in the details. Yeah. Um, I think you know another important thing to highlight is just that the idea was okay. So this these shared positions might not work an equal number of hours in each community each week. Mm -hmm. But overall, that's what they're moving towards. Okay. Um, now we didn't when we discussed this. This is for just basically shared operators at this point. Okay. If we can come to an agreement, if we can see that it's going to be feasible for both of us to operate, because there's been other there's been other towns tried this and failed before mm -hmm. because one needs more work than the other. Mm -hmm. Um, and what happens is the town that needs more work ends up costing the town that doesn't need as much work. Sure. And they end up costing their water users more money than what it amounts to in the end. And there's several other documented different things that uh, mm -hmm. we found as we went through. Is there something in there where after a year we reconvene and try to figure out? Yeah, we have we had that was in the MOU. Okay. It was a certain period of time to have a discussion on that, and it was, it was something else in the MOU about that. Yeah, I mean, it, there's it's a it's like the police one in that it's five years, but you can okay. another one community can opt out basically at any time. And okay. It's, so. Okay. 
we were a little early, Gordon, because Sorry, we did a we appointed a finance committee member at 540. So we just started. Um okay. I they had another question, but I first like, yeah. um will we be tracking percentage of time used in both towns so that we can so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to find out what it's gonna cost. Yeah. Because the thing is, I think the thing about is the water commissioners up here, and I, I can't speak for all of us, um, and they'll have to speak to this, mm -hmm. is that um, we got the grant, which we were very grateful they have the grant, we did a grant, but I mean, my concern is you're using a grant to pay salaries. Yeah, what it's like using a credit card. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, you, you need to you need to get ahead of that. You need to. But it's saving us what we would have paid for water offers. No, it's not so. us. We don't save anything. We don't save anything. We already pay benefits. We already do all that. They don't. Yeah, that's what so. We you were saying that of their the grant is paying for benefits, for benefits that Chester is otherwise not paying. No, it's paying for their payroll. Yes. Okay. They came up with a, uh, with a price for an operator. Don't ask me where they got this from because it was like crazy, crazy expense to hide. Okay. It doesn't fit into criteria for one thing. And what they want to do is they want to basically take that grant money and use that grant money to offset their, their operator for a year or two. So what happens after a year or two? Yeah. You see your water rates. Is that going to affect us after a year or two? Are we going to be suddenly? If it costs us, yeah. Okay. So that's what? the things we got to look at before we jump headlong into these things. Right. That's what Chris and I talked about. Okay. And the uh, commissioners are concerned. They want to talk to the other commissioners. We want to see where everybody's going to see what their costs are. See, cool. there, in there, basically, the outline of the waste is going where we basically come here every day, day to day. They don't want to do that. So they want to cut their costs and have their commissioners keep trying to run day to day. You remember how they used to run here and we were on the water power for a while? Mm -hmm. They kind of want to do that with the field commissioner type of thing. And you know how that did not work. Mm -hmm. It ended up costing us money. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Well, what was what was the purpose of the grant in the beginning when we applied for the grant? We were looking at it for equipment for our <clears throat> to offset some of our costs and our equipment is what we were looking at. And then how did this all of a sudden involve into a payroll system? You have to ask them. You have to ask them because them and Ira, they, they came up with the payroll. Right. Yeah. I mean, the way the way Chester was talking about it was, uh, you know, potentially there are going to be rate increases on their side at some point, and they're looking to kind of phase in this position. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they... And, and, you know, like Gordon and Brad have said, you know, our recommendation was, hey, focus on small capital purchases. Don't necessarily use this for payroll. But mm. Well, if they use it for payroll, like, like they just said. When's the next meeting? Uh, we are trying to determine if it's going to be the 12th or the 26th, I right. think. And it's in the evening? Yeah. On Zoom. And that's a face-to-face, -face, right? This yeah, one's face a face-to-face -face -face in Blanford, yeah. It's in the first face-to-face -face -face for everybody. Yeah, in Blanford. Okay. Um, will you just send me? I know I'm yeah. part of it, yeah. but we remember. <laughs> um, is Chester select board? To date, it's just been the commissioners and and their TA. Okay. But, yeah. Um, Maybe if we have a select board rep there, that would be Jason helpful. Or too. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. The biggest problem with that is we're on a different level. But yes. It's, it's not two like equal parties getting together and making everything better for both sides. Yeah. It's it's a good program for them not as much for not us. so much for us so okay that's my opinion okay <clears throat> they're planned for 20 years ago yeah and we're gonna end up paying to help them get out of their ride. well yeah we know the when when the grant was uh given it was under the stand, understanding to do xyz to improve the water system no it's well, for it's a shared water, water operator we originally wanted to do it. So the way we understood originally was it was basically purchase equipment that would be similar in Blanford, similar in Chester. Yeah. So if an operator comes in and he goes to one plant, it would be pretty much the same thing in the other plant. Since then, they've turned out and they, they went out and bought peristolic pumps. We remember that conversation, Pete. 
which is totally different than we have. I mean, they, you know, they're not communicating with what we're, we're, when it comes to changing equipment like mm -hmm. that. The grant, which we thought was going to be used for stuff like that, really isn't being used for stuff like mm -hmm. that anymore. Now it's good, like you said, it's being pushed to payroll. So it's like what we thought it was going to be, what we were hoping it was going to be, well, or not well, be. Well, going to be clear, there's still ninety thousand dollars in the yeah. grant is for small capital purchases. There is. There so, is. <laughs> It's not okay. Right, there is. Let's just right. say yeah. but what we're concerned about is what happens to them when that money runs out if they don't plan ahead. And that's a very valid concern. I think you it's know. a good thing we're about to have a face-to-face -face meeting because yeah. it feels okay. like we're at so that let's point. let's pause this and we'll yeah. talk sure. more about it at the meeting. Sure. Um, are you ready to start? All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Papadimitro. I'm a senior project manager, senior instrumentation control engineer with the company Wright Pierce. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening with you about the town of land for state of design uh, of the project. Uh, I've been working with uh, Gordon Avery, Kevin Shea, and his staff in this upgrade. And during the design, um, during the various design submittals, there were a number of different things that we had discovered as we were investigating the system that were, were truly needed in the facility. Some of those things were requested by uh, Gordon and his staff, the town. Others were recommended by Wright Pierce. Okay. The initial scope of the project uh, was basically the bare bones as bare bones as we can absolutely get it just to get you through the woods, okay? And we can certainly still continue with that in that particular group. An example of which is to use at the time when we were doing an initial study with the town, there was a SCADA computer. It's a supervisory control and data acquisition computer that at that particular time was three plus years old, okay? Now here we are in design, and then we're going to be going into construction. So at the end of this construction period, this computer is going to basically be six to seven years old. And that is really for SCADA systems that's at the end of its useful life. And Wright Pierce did not feel comfortable in trying to upgrade a computer that could potentially fail. I mean, this is, we're talking about water treatment here for an entire township. So we had made some recommendations and that's just one example, if you will, okay? So very quickly, um, uh, the, the people who have been involved since day one has been myself on the, on the project management and senior design, Maris Jedrachowski, who's our water regional group leader, and he has been instrumental in working with Gordon and his team on the funding end. We've also met with, uh, we've applied for various funding, Okay, and uh, we're not going to get into the funding aspects of it. Um, we're going to talk about the scope, what's going to be entailed in the design, because the recommended scope is now grown. Okay, and Rich Protozawicki, who's our regional group leader. What I wanted to talk here in the handout, and I'll try to go through this. I wish I had a point that I probably was here. Um, we had original versus. Uh, expanded scope so there's a control panel doesn't provide a tremendous amount of control at this particular point in time that is in their lab slash control room <clears throat> Gordon, at any point please feel free to correct me if i'm i'm wrong Kevin and i will okay that's fine so um so we originally were going to do some modifications and we we're going to have that there's a programmable controller that that does the monitors all the signals at the plant, does some alarming, does some very rudimentary control, all right, but it very low, low level. What we're going to do is for, um, for the team, we were going to add level. Uh, they needed to do level control in the filters to enhance filter performance. There was also some problems with the chemical delivery systems and some other instruments. In this particular case, to accommodate that IO, those input output signals, we were gonna add an RIO panel, which is a remote IO panel. And we thought we were gonna be able to add that as a small panel, okay? Keep it as a, 
in an office location, okay? And this would help keep the cost down. Unfortunately, as we found out and we needed additional instrumentation and additional signals, that panel now to accommodate those signals grew. And if it grows in size, it now couldn't fit inside the lab slash office. So we ended up moving it out to the, um, the filter area, closer to the equipment, okay? Now that it's closer to the equipment, it's now in a different environment. So it goes from one NEMA rating, if you would, to another NEMA rating. So the size of the panel and the NEMA rating have now increased the cost of that panel. What we also decided to do was convert it to a, a master control panel. We're going to upgrade instead of, we also found out too at the time, the existing PLC is now obsolete. Okay. If it fails, uh, you can get one. You can't get that specific model. You have to go to a higher model, but probably within the next five to seven years, that's going to be obsolete. The manufacturers, Adam Bradley, they came up with a completely new series that will work with this existing PLC, if you would. So we decided to convert this remote I.O. panel out on the floor to another, to a master control panel. You're going to have the latest version of programmable logic controller. And depending on the manufacturer, those will last you in terms of life cycle, 15, 20 years. So it was the smarter decision to do, but that comes at an added cost. The original control panel that was in the office now becomes a remote I.O. panel. We swapped functionality. So all I have to do is put a communication module in there, and all those physical signals now will now get communicated to our new master control panel. So that was some of the contributing uh, factors of the cost increase. The soda ash system, let's talk about that. So Gordon and Kevin, please help me out with this. Uh, the soda ash system, when we were there in the original study, there were leaks all over the place. Leaky, it was out of the you can't, you can't support it anymore. They don't, they don't make the pumps anymore. And it's DC for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steel, yeah. day tank. Yeah, uh, only one day tank. There's no redundancy. And I think you're down to one pump now, right? Is that correct? Yeah, we have three pumps. So if, if it ever comes up, we need both on demand. We have no backup pump anymore. Okay. Yeah, one is down. So soda ash is used to correct what? The pH. The pH. Okay. The pH okay. So certainly that is a compliance issue with the DEP. So it's a critical system. In order to upgrade that, it's a vendor package system, all right, that's provided by an OEM manufacturer. And what we would do is we would work with the vendor, design that, help custom design that system, not too much because you don't want to spend a lot of money customizing a standardized product, but we want to make sure that it would be compatible with the equipment that we're going to be putting in the plant and it could communicate to our new master control panel. So for that, that's a new soda ash system. And that now is all these items here in green on these lines of the expanded scope. Okay. Uh, let's hey, see. Uh, yes, see, I don't know if you're talking about here or later, but the flow pacing, do you hear you? Absolutely. You're yeah. going to enhance that with the chemicals. Yes. Yeah. So, um, another thing, let's, uh, this category down here is instrumentation. So, um, it's a slow sand, uh, it's a slow sand filter, right? Okay. And it has, uh, does it have the anthracite at the bottom or no, GAC? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Granulated activated carbon. So basically what you want to try to do is control the level within the filter. Now, as you know, the deeper things get, the higher the pressure at the bottom of, of the filter, right? So that forces more water through the filter and it enhances performance. Right now, there is no control of that level. You, there, you can have filter overflows, you can have filters dry up, you can have a myriad of things. And that affects the, um, the performance of the filters and the amount of water that can be treated, okay? Um, so what we decided to do was add four uh, uh, level instruments, but those level instruments are part of the original scope. 
And but now we found out Kevin came on board is that we wanted to do uh, a better enhancement of when do we back when do we uh, backwash the filter? What's the determining factor? Right now, it's a quali um, qualitative. You have to look at the filter and judge by eye. Maybe that's not good enough. Right now, your plant isn't. It's a guessing game. Yeah, it's a guessing game. So what we decided to do um, for Kevin's suggestion with the town um, was we're going to add flow meters on the discharge of the filters. So what will that do? Let's think about that. So as we're feeding the filters water, okay, we're modulating a valve, which was part of the scope. And that valve is going to control flow into the filter. What restricts the water out of the filter? Well, the filter media. When the filter is clean, you get more flow. When the filter is dirty, you get less flow and it becomes more restrictive. So let's think about what's going to happen. Now I'm going to control to, let's say, six feet, for want of a better term. Now my filter is getting dirtier. The flow is becoming more restrictive. I got to open up the valve more to send more water, but more water is really not going as much because your filter is getting dirtier. Okay. Uh, actually, it's going to be the other way. Your filter is going to close down. Uh, your, your valve is going to close down. So you'll be able to trend this data on SCADA. Okay. And when you see that your valve is pinching down to control to that same level set point, you say, ah, my filter's dirty. Now you can make an intelligent decision, okay, as to when to send somebody up to the plant, which is what, 20 minutes, a half hour away, yeah. depending on the weather and the snow and all of that, but whatever. Yeah. Now you can make a more intelligent decision as to when you're going to send somebody to the plant, okay? Knowledge is power. And knowing that, it's also money, okay? So we make those intelligent decisions. Let's talk about turbidity meters. Turbidity, Kevin helped me out, is more like a how cloudy the water is. Particles, particles in the water. Particles in the water. Obviously, you don't want particles in the water. You want crystal clear water. Currently, now, on each filter, you have filter turbidity, okay? That's... This is a requirement they do reporting the, the water department uh, reports on these numbers, right? Yes. Okay. So you have to report on these mm -hmm. things to the state. Thank you. That being said, um, there was a new state regulation for the DEP that came out that they have to monitor total turbidity. And well, why don't you just take all the four? instruments and sum it up in SCADA. Well, that's not what the DDP wants. We have to run new plumbing to a new sample, take sample lines, combine them for each filter and combine them into one trough and add a new flow meter, uh, turbidity meter to take that reading. That's the only way the DDP will accept that. So we have to purchase a new meter. Now it's come to our attention too that of the four meters, there are two meters or maybe even three turbidity meters that are not working reliably right now. So the thought process is let's buy five turbidity meters, trash the ones that are that are no longer working, okay? And then we'll keep the other two on the shelf as spares. So now we've added um, four mag meters, five turbidity meters. This uh, splitter box ultrasonic level was added because we, we discovered that the raw water pumps coming off the, uh, the reservoir, we needed a methodology to control that speed. And it was something that we you know, overlooked during design. It's, as you get further and deeper into the process, you have an opportunity to think about things in a more clear, concise, and a deeper manner. So what this does is these raw water pumps will control one water level in one box. And from that box, the water now is distributed to each of the filters, right? It makes sense. The valves that we've added as part of the original scope will now modulate to maintain a level in each of the filters. You don't want to overspeed your raw water pumps because you'll overflow your filters. So what you're going to do is control the level in that splitter box and you modulate the speed of your raw water pumps to control that level. It's not 
an, a, an expensive meter, but it's something that we wanted to report as added scope. Um, fiber optic cable. You're on top of the mountain, I think is like 1,600 feet elevation mm -hmm. up there. Well, I think it's more than that. Okay, you're by a water source, okay? There's lightning, and lightning propagates in both directions over copper, right? This pink cable behind this young gentleman here, that's an ethernet communication cable, okay? That, if there's a local lightning strike close enough to the building, that will propagate in both directions and it may take out my expensive computer and it may take out and damage my expensive PLC. Why do that? Let's go with fiber optics. It's faster, it's more reliable, and it's completely impervious to lightning. Okay. Uh, I didn't ask, but am I time limited? No. I'll go as quickly as I can. So I, I don't know. I mean, not no, you're okay. Okay. You're okay. Um, our last meeting, the there was a need, we understand, for HOC instruments, uh, lab instruments. So we've added that to the scope, okay? Yeah, we actually, uh, with the Grand Bureau, purchased those two things too. Those In two advance. Carburetors? Yeah, no, no, the HOC, the HOC instrumentation, I believe, was the um, UV254 and the okay. meter. Excellent. Um, Continuing on, if there's no further questions, maybe it's good. Any questions at this point? Okay. Sample pumps. Right now, there are four, three sample pumps. There's four. Two we're running. And up in that is with the ARPA grant, you're able to purchase those too. So good. I got a question for you, John. Yes, sir. With the fiber, you can send that signal anywhere. Oh, yeah. We're going to, well, we're going to get to that. Hold that thought. And it's expandable. So. Yes. Yes. Okay. So fiber is very fast. You have gigabit speeds. The modern communications um, now are PLCs and computers can speak at gigabit speeds. Now, uh, you have people heard of Web City Fiber? Okay. There's Web City Fiber at the plant. This could not have been better for the town. Could not have been better. And I'll tell you why we're going to use that. So just keep that in your, your golf bag, so to speak. All right. So these three sample pumps, what they do is they pump water, continuous raw and finished water to the various instruments. Just they pump all day long. Okay. And they send water to a trough. And then the instrument has its sensor in the trough. And it takes its readings, whether it's pH, chlorine levels, turbidity. UV 254. No, so, so, so in any event, that's what those sample pumps do. Um, those sample pumps were on one electrical line, number one, so that if that line tripped, all your sample pumps would go out. That ever happened? Yeah. Several times. So we're going to re-engineer that. And then those sample pumps, too, we also had to do some calculations to make sure they got the proper flow in pressure. Up from downstairs to upstairs to the uh, to the instrumentation. So there's going to be some uh, added scope for that. SCADA system we're on the next item, and here's where um, we're going to talk a little bit about the fiber. So originally, the SCADA upgrade was the client has or the town has an existing license for uh, uh, it's now called Factory Talk by Rockwell Automation. That's the, uh, the software where the system integrators design all these graphics that represent the filters, the plants, push buttons, pilot lights, selector switch, and makes a representation of the plant so that the operators can see that and control these various pumps and filters, change set points, change alarm points. That's what that does, okay? And you get to play on your computer when you're doing this stuff, it's, it's, it's fun. Um, or it can be. So in any event, we were going to just upgrade the computer that was there with memory and the operating system and update the existing factory talk license, okay? Right now, if that computer dies, you have no way to see what your plant is doing, none. You can't tell what, other than going to the instruments at the plant and taking down numbers, you can't see what your system is doing overall. 
Okay, you'll have to take all these bits and pieces, run throughout the plant, put a picture together in your head. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. And then, okay, here's the problem. Now I have your alarms. If you have an alarm, your alarm is not going to be visual on your computer. Okay, at the bottom of the screen, if there's an alarm, let's say high turbidity, uh, high pump flow, pump failure, it'll it'll flash at the bottom of your screen. It gives you enough information where the operators can make intelligent decisions and take action per their prescribed OEM manuals, operations and maintenance manuals. That said, we didn't think that right cares didn't feel that that was appropriate. Okay. For a water system, a modern water system control system to have one computer that was going to be six to seven years old at the end of the construction period doesn't make sense. So what we recommended was putting in redundant SCADA servers. What's a redundant SCADA server? Well, a server is the one that says, I'm going to talk to all the controls at the plant because I'm a smart guy and I'm going to keep all the information. I'm going to display the data and I'm going to keep this in the database. Okay. I'm in control. Your PLC is the one that actually does the control so that if the SCADA system fails, but You'll understand in a minute why we went redundant. Um, you can still control the plant locally. We were going to do some redesigns where you can do local control. Okay. The redundancy is we're going to put a primary and a secondary server. And these are going to be rack mounted. So if you ever seen like in a school or, a, or an IT room where they have those, those racks, those black racks where they slide in these computers and network switches. I'm sorry, I didn't get graphics for this. Um, but anyway, that's the format. And you're going to have one that's the primary and one that's the secondary. So the primary is going to be the one doing the control in the background, getting all the information, communication, generating alarms and everything else. If he fails, the secondary kicks in automatically. In fact, while they're operating, they're sharing the data. So it becomes bumpless and seamless. This is a town, it's a rural town, understand about tax base, but water's important, okay? Drinking water is important. Safe. Safe drinking water, thank you, okay? It's worth, it's definitely worth the effort, plus the fact that the plant is not 24-7, 365 man, staffed, sorry. Staff, okay. So if there's a problem, the the plant could get out of compliance before an alarm could ever get dialed out, and somebody can even respond to it. And then what would happen? You have a, a compliance issue, you have a violation, you have to comply with the DDP, right? You can get bad press and you can get fines. It's well worth being proactive by putting the redundant server in now. And having to deal with that on the end, and possibly somebody getting sick because there's too much chlorine in the water. Okay, so, so that server redundancy that's the hardware aspect of it. We're going to have to upgrade your software licensing to accommodate that. Those get locked, those servers get locked where nobody can touch it in a cabinet like this. Okay, but it's open. Okay, in the sense that. You can see the equipment in there. It's breathable, right? There's ventilation, but somebody can't get in it. So that means that a possible vandal, vandal who's partying up at the mountain up there can't break into the building and get into that and destroy it. Um, cybersecurity, the new NIST and AWWA cybersecurity, they recommend locking up the computers. If I have a desktop computer like that one sitting over there, I'm sorry, I don't need to keep pointing in that direction, but it just happens to be there. Anybody could have walked into this room if it was unlocked and tampered with that. Is that what you want for your drinking water system? No. So that's uh, that's enough on the redundancy. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. Yes, sir. Um, a lot of times redundant servers yep. uh, live in two different places. Uh, in other words, there's yes. one will sit in one building and one will sit yes. in another building in case a fire happens or something like that. Yep. Is that part of this or are they actually going to live in the same spot? Well, right now we were initially thinking about keeping it in the same spot. But what we're going to talk about next, there is a possibility of doing that 
here. Okay. Putting one of them here. So that's a great question that you that you that you pose. Um, okay, so the SCADA client. SCADA client is just a dumb terminal has the graphics loaded on it, and it gets all the information and the status of the pumps and the alarms from the server, okay? It's just a dumb terminal. And that allows me, that allows the operators to operate the system without having to go inside to the SCADA servers. It, again, provides security for your system. Okay? And that will be located in the office slash lab, all right? So this includes all, all costs for the SCADA client, remote alarm access to SCADA changes that we're doing. We're adding remote alarming and we're adding reporting, okay? Right now, I don't believe you have any automated reporting right now, is that correct? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the town, the water department, Kevin, uh, Gordon, and during the design phase, we're gonna decide what reports need to be done. And we're going to put that in the specifications. And then the system integrators that bid on the job, they're going to have to execute the reports. And they, these reports could be fully automatic, or they could be semi-automatic or manual. It could be any different flavor that you want. But we, that's why we're adding this uh, 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 historian and uh, uh, reporting software. Okay. So... I think we're coming close to the end here. I know we're on a little something now. We'll try to speed it up. Uh, so now we talk about pricing. Okay, so for the convert the remote I.O. to the master control panel in the soda system, this here was what was proposed by the town, and this what was proposed by Wright Pierce. Okay, as part, we wanted to separate it in case she wanted to make a, a better, more informed decision. So with that, the soda air system right now, we have a budgetary number for the construction cost of that. That's the soda air system, the installation, the wire, the conduit, the um, into the system for 53,000. And it's gonna take about approximately $20,000 worth of engineering fee to make sure that that happens, to get that integrated. On our end, we recommended the remote I.O. to the main MCP, the hardware, the larger panel, going from the number 12 to the number four, um, the additional I.O. that we're putting in there, that's about 41 grand, and that's about $2,400 worth of engineering thing associated with that. Going down here, we talk about all the instruments. These are the ones, again, that the client wanted, the turbidity meters, the mag meters, the hot lab instruments, uh, our engineering fee to go along with that, to do the research on those and make sure we get the right ones that get integrated into the system, different flows, requirements. They got to get shown on drawings. They got to get specified so that the contractor can procure and install and commission those systems. Uh, over here, what did we have? We, Wright Pierce recommended the ultrasonic. That was $5,700. And to get that integrated with electrical and INC, it was $1,400. The fiber optic cable, it's about $1,700. The cable is one price, but you also have the labor associated with pulling the cable and terminating the cable and testing the cable. They use special instruments, OTDR or power meters at the various frequencies and lengths, they make sure that when you're pulling a fiber off the cable, which is glass or, or a flexible fiber, right, glass fiber, it has a tensile strength. And if you pull that, like if you ever pull the straw, right, it'll shrink and it'll cause a lot of loss in signal, in light signal. So you have to have it tested. So all that testing has to come into play. And that's where we get this $1,700 here. And to make sure that it all gets specified, it's about a grand worth of work here. All right, uh, let's see. All right, I think that was that. So we got the sample pumps here. The hardware was approximately 1,100, 11,000. 11, 
and it was about by the time we got uh, we got some initial numbers from uh, from Gordon. We did some research. We called a number of manufacturers, um, and then these would also have to be specified and uh, uh, in the contract. And our engineering fee is roughly thirty one hundred dollars for that. Uh, let's see what else. The SCADA system, the redundant servers, uh, the SCADA changes. Let's go through the SCADA changes now. What Kevin talked about having fiber, you know, fiber you could send out anywhere. You have Web City fiber at the plant. That's terrific. Our computer, our SCADA system could interface with Web City fiber, and they have fiber here, right? Like that fiber runs physically runs here, correct? Mm -hmm. It'd be a direct connect. So we were talking about putting a SCADA client, right, which is like literally where they have a computer sitting right here, which would be the same as the computer sitting at the plant. So now any alarm that happens, you can see it. First of all, get a dial out that, you know, on his cell phone from the alarm. Gordon will see it, he'll run into his office, he'll say, oh, oh this is what's going on. I'll acknowledge that alarm, reset the pump, and go ahead. Get me, get my system back up and running. Okay, that's what that SCADA computer is going to do. We have to find a secure place for that, right? Somewhere. Okay. So we have to find a reasonably secure place for that. And don't forget, these SCADA systems, just like your PCs at home, they have, well, uh, you know. Password, a log on names and usernames and passwords. And then that's just to get into the computer. Also, you'll have a username and password. And, you know, Gordon and Kevin may be able to sign on as a supervisor or superintendent, which gives them total control. But you may have operators at a, at a lower level that you only give some control to. Okay. They can monitor only or some could change you know, start and stop pumps, but you may not have allow others to change set points. So we build in the security to the system. Um, but that's what that additional SCADA change is going to do. So um, it's going to be all costs related to the SCADA client, a town hall, the remote alarm access. We're also adding a Rockwell uh, software maintenance agreement that your SCADA software is always going to be in maintenance and compliance, and you'll have the technical support. So whoever your system integrator is supporting your system, whether it's local like Elm, ITS, or somebody else, they'll have that maintenance agreement where they can call a problem, contact Rockwell, and they'll get the technical support. Or if Gordon learns how to program a SCADA system, you can call him. So, <laughs> all right. All right, so in addition to that, we're going to add the uh, historian and Excel reporter for state and DDP reporting. So, man, I wish there was a lot of water. <laughs> There's cops over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm down to the home spread. <laughs> so, construction costs, engineering costs. It doesn't automatically happen, so we engineers have to put this together. Okay. So let me know when you're done. I did something wrong. Uh oh. It's not. So I can point from here. So um, the original scope, again, for the bare bones, we had an opinion of construction cost of about $179,000. Okay. Our engineering fee, because again, this is not like a big, building costs when you're having all these high construction numbers and we're talking in the millions like you would on civil infrastructure projects where I just take 10%, 8 to 10% of my construction cost and boom, that's my engineering fee. Those same metrics don't hold out for this type of project. Our engineering fee to do the SCADA upgrade was about $83,000 for a total cost of two sixty two seventy. dollars Now with these changes, and the expanded scope, we're going to about $453,000, okay? And we're adding about $42,000 worth of engineering fee for a total of plus 
not a total, but uh, for an additional 495 so that the total comes about to be $758,000. Now, we are in the world of COVID. We are in the world of supply chain. We have seen unprecedented cost increase on an annual basis. We're talking 10, 15 percent higher. Things that we used to be able to get in six to eight weeks now take six to eight months to get. Okay. How, as an engineer, can you predict this market and how can you predict the contractor's cost? Well, what we've been doing over the last few years is we've been historically tracking these numbers. And although it seems on the high side, we're thinking that this is going to be a number that will be conservative enough to cover for funding. So that is the total scope increase. The project now went from 262 to 758, give or take. Um, I'm thinking, I'm praying it's going to be less than this. You know, you try to anticipate as best you can what the contractors are going to be charging you these days for labor and everything else. So that's about it. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Yes, Kevin. Well, your engineering fee, I, I remember at one of our meetings. I'm sorry, what? At the, your engineering fees, I remember at one of our meetings. Yes, sir. That takes you up to the bid document, putting it out for bid, and that's as far as your engineering. Yes, fees. correct. Correct. It doesn't include going through the project or commission. Yeah, Let me we'll double check that. So there'll be another, another oh, cost. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here it is. So great question. So I know we did that separately, Kevin. I didn't include that in here. Just sort of no surprises. Yeah. I thought we were around 900,000 with that actual put in there. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't bring that. I forgot about the uh, construction aspect of it. No, I do not have that. So, we had submitted some numbers, and what did you what did you see? Remember that came yeah, out. Yeah, it's a little over nine hundred nine nine two okay. nine nine twenty five. So, so with that the entire project. Yeah. So with that, um, we've been working with the DEP, right? Yeah, Mac Marius. Yeah, we yeah. had conversations yeah. with the DEP. We had submitted our ninety percent to the DEP. We're going to, when the time is appropriate, we're going to meet with them and run through the whole project with us. And they felt confident during the meeting that we spoke about, we spoke to them that they felt that they, you know, shouldn't have an issue funding the project. The only thing that I'm not aware of is, are there certain percentages that they're going to be funding that project to, or are they funding the whole thing? Well... I know we got. I know we got proof of state revolving fund for three hundred fifty. Okay, and that's where the problem came up. Is, is after we started getting into this thing, all these other problems are looking found. Or, like I said, when we started doing this, the skater room wasn't as bad a failure as it is now. Since the day we first stepped in and started doing this, till mm -hmm. now we've lost pumps. We've you know it's just we're on a downhill slope. You know, we're coming off so we yeah. yeah. Useful like we yeah. have Windows 7. Yeah. Who else uses Windows 7? I don't think anybody. So did you just say that we were approved for a three hundred fifty thousand dollars grant from no state state revolving fund? So and that was independent of what the DEP. That that was when we sat down with the DEP for the three projects for state revolving fund that we got approval for. That was one of them. That's the one we have to go back. Because we had all these upgrades, we said, okay, just get the project going and we can 
uh, reapply for okay. more later on. I know you're working on this with Mary, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, so we have partial funding. Okay. So. So when you say we have partial funding. 350,000. Okay. So and that so take that off the nine hundred thousand. Well, you take that off the nine hundred thousand. Like I said, plus plus we you know we got the hot instruments, so there's another sixteen thousand. We got the pumps, so there's you know there's another probably ten thousand. Yeah, it was eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I mean? We're we're chipping away at this and taking some of it off. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's going up. We're trying to. Well, what what I'm looking for is a bottom line. The project, like you said, is about nine hundred nine hundred twenty-five thousand. And and how is how what are we looking at at financing? Nine hundred twenty-five thousand. No, I mean, are we looking at a uh, debt exclusion to pay for this? Are we looking at uh, interim loan? I mean, the revolving fund loan is what we're looking at right now. I I'd, I'd like to try to basically get a, a, a portion of this or a portion of some other project. As a USDA, so we can refinance our other loans because those are six percent, which would bring our debt costs down just because of the interest rate. But yeah, we're we're right now we're actively looking at loans, any kind of loans we can get, grants. I mean, we just got the capital improvement grant, which is a sixty percent grant, so all we have to pay is forty percent on that. So I mean, we're we're looking at multiple different possible financing options. <laughs> I, I also, sorry to interrupt, um, I took the liberty of texting Marius. Marius Jedrutowski is our water group leader, and he was instrumental in working on the funding with Gordon and, uh, you know, with the DEP, yeah. Gordon and Kevin. Um, I basically uh, had asked him, he's not sure what percentage of the 900 plus thousand that the DEP would be able to fund. So I know you're looking for a bottom line. He did say it will be funded, and he wanted me to mention that this is part of a DEP consent order to, to get this done. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to want to try to help you. That, well, I can't, I, I don't know, even know if I can make that statement. But That's how we got the original state revolving fund, because we got a real high score. Mm -hmm. The I higher you score, score, you get the worse. Absolutely. Yeah, look, whatever. So that's how we were to get the, to get the, get the state revolving fund again. So that that leads me to wonder. I I'm seeing a lot of ifs here, and uh, the work needs to be done. It needs to be done. It's going to run roughly nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Our our goal is basically we got to we got to find some kind of grants or loans or whatever we got to pay for it. And once we're trying to work with the DEP right now, you know, hopefully we can get state revolving fund to match it. Have you had any conversations with finance, the finance team? We haven't gotten to them enough. So one thing I will do is tomorrow I will send Gordon, uh, Chris, and Kevin that construction number. So you have a total number. Mm -hmm. So that will be first order of business. Second order of business, we can try to follow up with our DEP contacts mm -hmm. and find out what sort of percentages we're going to be looking at here. <clears throat> So and what what is is do we have a timeline? I was told once we got it in, um, uh, there I think it had to go to bid by a certain time, or the funds had to be expended by a certain time, and we'll get that number as well. No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Mary, what 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 do we owe on our original cost for the plan? 25 years. Yeah, but that's paid now. It's not no. paid. It's a 40 year note. We paid off one. It's a, a 40 couple years ago. Any of them. Four of them. There's I thought we paid one, one off a couple years ago. The lowest one has about a $660,000 balance. We pay $150,000 in interest on $100,000 mm -hmm. of payment. Mm -hmm. We pay six, oh, uh, as high as 6% on these loans. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, like I said, where I'd like to run a small portion of this as a USDA on loans is because the only way the USDA will let us refinance our loans is if we basically do another project. I understand. And so, have you had that conversation with Sarah Hunter? No, we haven't talked to her about that. Because she can help you with that. Yeah. So um, 
Yeah, like I said, we just, the next thing we have to do is, you know, well, yeah, actually, we have, I have mentioned that to Sarah under a couple of times. She's okay. One, you know, because mm -hmm. we had a group meeting with the state and um, on one of our Zoom meetings, and um, USDA rep was there, and I asked them about that, and that's how I know that we have to have a new project in order to, re, to refinance. Mm -hmm. We just can't go out and refinance. The only we can do it, and like I said, you know, so we can refinance these all into like a 2% or 3%. Mm -hmm. We're talking millions of dollars here. If we can drop two or three percent yeah. off of our six percent loan, payments may not even go up. Yeah, you know, it's that's the thing about it. That's the that's the the whole. So, is there anywhere in this project that we can reduce costs at all? I mean, I have to ask that. Um. Well. So like I said, that's why, like I said, that's why we got, we tried to get the um the, the sample pumps. We tried to get those outright with our funding. That took some money off. Yeah. You no, know, that's why I was we're picking out as much of this stuff as we can. And I talked with Pete about maybe getting, you know, a couple turb meters because another plant's upgrading and taking some of their older turb meters. Okay. That'll say it was a huge amount of money. Yeah. Um and and you know, but other than that. The rest of the stuff, it's I mean, it's it's obsolete. Don't forget this plant is the plant has been online for 18, a little over 18 years. So, so when they went into construction mode, this stuff is over 20 years old now. So my next question for you is are you forward thinking with the capital improvement plan? Like I'm hearing um him say that we have um things that will be obsolete something we're, we're already doing that remember that that's that that grant funding we got yeah that's part of that that is also a consent order from the dep okay so so we'll be planning so this have, hopefully like won't. projects going on mm -hmm. right now yeah mm -hmm. the capital capital improvement plan the distribution maintenance or the distribution um yeah the distribution upgrading plan mm -hmm. we have uh I don't remember the technical terms of them. They're all in the books in the other one. Okay. Storage tank. The storage, storage tank and the um, distribution mm -hmm. evaluation. That's another one. Um, you know, we're doing, there's a bunch of other ones besides that minor. But those are the three big ones. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we just got, like I said, we just got the grant funding for the, um, which one was that? Chris, you just got, you sent me the email. That was for the capital improvement the plan. The capital improvement mm -hmm. plan. That was a 60% match. Which is huge, mm -hmm. you know. So now we only owe like maybe seventeen thousand. Yeah, seventeen thousand, but still, yeah, it's better. You know, forty something thousand. So, what do you need from us going forward right now? <clears throat> Gord, just remind me because I think when Josh was here, he had talked about using capital projects money from the town to help out with the skate upgrade. But well, that was you know, with the original. They said we're going to help out with two hundred thousand dollars, but. Back when we were hundred thousand dollars, three fifty was what we were looking at yeah. before all the other problems came into play. So, um, so I would say so. Sarah's going to be here in the building tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, sure. and then we have a meeting of our finance team and our finance committee on Wednesday morning. Um, I'm happy to share this presentation with them. Talk to Sarah. Okay. Get some kind of thoughts about you know <laughs> whether this is in a realistic ballpark that the town can help out in some way. And then we can talk about options from there. Because so I think really Sarah has to weigh in on this, mm -hmm. just given the magnitude. Um, TJ mentioned the deadline, and, and if this is a state consent order, what's the time frame? I'm gonna. Ha I haven't been really in depth. Marius, our regional growth group leader, has been uh, working with DEP, so I will get those. I have notes to to respond to that by tomorrow. Okay. okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. If this work is done, how long will this be operational and up to date? Great question. Um, there are, I mean, there's beneficial use. The computer that's there now has been working for what, four years, three, four years now? Yeah, I think we've got more lightning to up. So, okay. Right now, it's operating on Windows 7. If you're lucky, and your hardware doesn't fail, you don't need to call Microsoft, that thing can last you 
10 years, if you're lucky. And if you don't get hit by lightning in the, in the, in the area. I mean, you have a home PC yourself, I'm sure, right? That's the weakest link is that computer. The programmable logic controller typically will last you 15, 20 years, okay? The only problem is, and why I say that is because now at that time period, chip manufacturers change. There's a lot of chips that are uh, CPUs or central processing units that have gone become obsolete is because they don't last. So I'm thinking on the whole, your, your main controls, your instrumentation, as long as it's maintained and calibrated on an annual basis, could last a very long time. Your pro programmable logic controller could last you 15, 20 years. But the problem is if it come, becomes obsolete in that period, what do you do? And I cannot usually um, guess or predict when a manufacturer is going to put something as, on that obsolescence path, okay? For example, in one of the, uh, the controller is uh, Micrologix 1100, I believe. Is it 1100 or 1200? In the, um, in the soda ash system, that thing now has been, it was operating for 15 years. It's now obsolete. So if that dies, you don't have a direct replacement for it. And you're going to have to put in, because of the software that's in there, you're going to have to put an older computer that that could go off of PLC that could go obsolete in about five years. Or put in a brand new programmable controller, reprogram the whole thing and get another 15, 20 years out of it. So to try to answer your question, the PLCs will last about 15, 20 years. The instruments if maintained will last a good long time. Nothing lasts forever from the time that we did the study, right. you had four, you had four turbidity meters that were running fat, dumb, and happy. And now you got two. Okay. So it's hard to predict those things. Your computer is the weakest link. And that's why we put redundant computers in there. Okay. From Dell. All right. We're Dell and you know some of the other compact Toshiba, the high-end manufacturers, but we usually 99.9% .9 they put Dell processors in it. Why? because they get great maintenance and really good pricing on them. And your operating system, the one that's there now is on Windows 7. You know, right now they're going, you know, most people have Windows 10 in their house. They're going to be going to Windows 11. I mean, it's out, right? And the softwares, your SCADA software, your PLC development software, they get upgraded too. I put on a whole presentation. I presented at professional society SCADA obsolescence, the topic of SCADA obsolescence. So when you're, you upgrade your SCADA software, uh-oh, now I have to upgrade my operating software, my operating system. It's all interrelated. So it's hard to put a number on that, okay? But with good care, lightning suppression, proper maintenance, it's installed at good temperature, a computer could last seven years plus. Yeah, question regarding that. So, are you going to uh, consider virtualizing the server? Now, you're, you said you're going to existing PCs that are Windows 7 desktop. You're going to servers now. Yes. Uh, so, you, it's not going to be a Windows 11. It's going to be a server. Well, we have, yeah, yeah, there'll be, yes, correct. Right. And so, you're, and, and then you want to go to a uh, redundant server, so two server. Physical. Yeah, we have, to, we have to look at what options the software manufacturer allows for virtualization or non virtualization. So we recognize virtualization allows for quicker deployment. And quicker recovery. And recovery, correct. Yep. And in that event, and then if you did have an offsite, then you would do replication. And so rather than having two physical servers mm -hmm. uh, that are redundant, you could have that redundancy and the replication and then just do virtualization for the recovery. Sure. And Want to come work for right, Pierce? Uh, <laughs> I used to um, I used to be employed by Home Electrical. Oh, yeah. Great outfit. I worked on their uh, the PNG wastewater treatment facility, mm -hmm. million dollar project for the yeah. uh, out in Long Island, West Virginia. Um, and I, I no longer work for them. I'm not representing Elmo Electric tonight, but I do know Mike, who does service the yes. Lamford, um, um obsolete uh, PO 
DLC. So mm -hmm. great that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, his he is only you know. The system is hanging on. Yeah, we let's put it this way. We haven't we haven't gotten to that phase yet, but yes. And then, yeah, so I I put us there. Um end up doing chief controls design manager over there to uh, work on the mm -hmm. Um I also also worked for Iowa Nation. I was their engineering manager for, for who? Iowa Nation, mm -hmm. East Coast distributor for uh industrial machine controls. Okay. Yep. Um I was their engineering manager. All their industrial machine controls products. So I'm very familiar. And I'm also RS Logix 5000 certified. So, yep. Um, the system you presented tonight, I think it's sound. I think they got a really good design here. The only question I had was on the virtualization yeah. service as a potential cost savings account. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll look into it. Now, all these computers, I, I'm not a computer guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best I get out of it is tic tac toe or something. But <laughs> now these computers are operating different machinery, different mechanics, physical well, mechanics. Well, well, they don't really operate it. The operation, the real control happens at a there's different levels of control. They call it hierarchies, like an onion, you peel different layers, right? The control happens in the control panel with the PLC, the programmable logic controller. And what that is, is an industrially hardened piece of equipment, okay? We try to take computers out of the industrial environment and try to keep them in a temperature-controlled, safe office environment as best as we can. Yeah, no, I, so, I think you're misunderstanding mis uh, my question or I'm okay. not asking. Or actually, yeah. Uh, like, like, like in your automobile, you have all these different components that yeah, operate. So at the will of the computer, all right? Well, there there is an, a piece of equipment that that computer is telling how to operate. So like in the ash system, okay, uh, the computer is telling it, well, you got to do this, you got to do that, whatever. But then that ash system doesn't work. It, I mean, the computer can tell it, but something physical you gave an alarm yeah you, you have an alarm yeah but is there any warranty on this stuff you're, you're talking about you know uh all this backup stuff and that and uh i know like when it comes something goes wrong with your transmission yeah. in your car and it's not the computer now you have a maintenance problem here yeah. and this is what i'm getting at how, how is that part of all this going to work so Maintenance is a great question. If you don't maintain it, you can pay me now or pay me later. And you should play a lot more later. Okay. So what gets maintained? As the gentleman had mentioned, Elm, I think, is right now servicing uh, un under a contract or call as needed. They come and they service. Instrumentation, it has to get maintained. Mm -hmm. has to get cleaned. There's in the manufacturer's they have a, a whole book called an O&M, Operations and Maintenance Manual, cleaning, servicing, recalibration. So in order for this, the instruments, which are the ones, the baseline that are reading your turbidity, your chlorine, your pH, and everything else, right, those have to be maintained. And usually you can get, with a local integrator, a uh, maintenance contract, mm -hmm. okay? So that's a step. Okay, that's one of the steps. Also, if something goes wrong with the skate with the PLC, the programmable logic controller is like this modular unit that goes in the control panel. That's who's doing all the control. Okay, so those are industrially hardened for temperature, radio frequency um, interference, electromagnetic interference. They're born. They're designed to go in these control panels. And you know, then the manufacturers, um, you know, 508 has certain requirements to build the control panel assembly, surge suppression, light, you know, lightning suppression, a bunch of other things. So you put these protections in to protect your hardware, to protect your investment. So you can, you can usually the hardware will come with a one year warranty. Okay. Your computers now. Okay. The gentleman was asking before in your question, together, you can buy what they call extended maintenance periods, okay? 
Like if I'm going to buy a computer from Dell for my home use, I'm going to get the standard one year warranty. But if I decide to open up a business, right? And now I'm doing my own databases and you know my whole business is on there. I want to get an extended warranty. Okay, you can buy those. Comes at a cost, but Dell regularly you can get a three year warranty from Dell for the hardware. Okay, so and then I talked about um, the state of maintenance agreement. Remember, I'd mentioned that yeah. as one of the added. So the maintenance agreement basically says, here's my license number, town of Brantford, right? There's a problem. Why, um, why is this happening? Something's going wrong with the, with the SCADA system. I don't understand this. I'm having a problem communicating all of a sudden because maybe we just updated it. Mm -hmm. or maybe the operating system updated. Remember I said they're interrelated. So now Elm comes down, right? They take a look at what's going on. They take the maintenance contract number, right? And they call up factory, uh, Rockwell Automation, and they describe the problem. There's a case number, and they provide technical assistance so that Elm or whomever else is doing your maintenance can solve the problem. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for your question. Um, anyone else have any more questions? I just, I just want to follow up on yes, sir. He was asking about money and future projects and capital. And how long is stuff going to last? It's also up to the DEP if they come out with new regulations, the water department's responsible for making it um, up to date, whatever it may be instrumentation, doing something with the filters, the treatment plant. Um, also, um, you mean addressing different or new DEP yeah, regulations? You can have your sanitary survey. Yeah, DEP yeah. comes in, they do it. They do a complete investigation of the treatment plant, the pump station, your whole system, and they can come up with a list of items that you know, mm -hmm. that you have to come up with right. and add or replace or repair. So that that's, that'll be another cost. And then I think your sanitary survey is every three years. Yes. So there's always new regulations coming out. Um, and DEP tries to make uh, every water department yeah. help. So, can't sample for it. yeah, I guess those things are going to come up yeah. because the turbidity, the the total turbidity came out of the blue, yeah. and it was I think Bernie, your your mate, your it's called that's the EP and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a compliance yeah. issue. So I want to get back to your question about what's the total number going to be. Uh, I apologize for not having the construction cost here, but my main focus was to discuss the the scope changes of the mm -hmm. design. So that's why I didn't have that that number available. But again, we can I'll get that to Gordon tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, sir. All right. So I guess we just have to talk about how the heck we would afford this <laughs> since our town just voted down. Um, so right. So to the gentleman who spoke earlier today, what was your name, sir? Hi, Ron. Thank you for your comment about virtualization. So as we're moving forward, we're going to try to, again, we, you know, we came in with an original number that was as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And we did that. And then as we went on through the study and the design, we started finding a whole bunch of things that were wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Additional things that were wrong. Something's happened in process mm -hmm. that needed replacement. That being said, you know, that, that scope has now expanded. Um, but we will try to continue to look on the town's behalf as we're designing, you know, things like virtualization, uh, risk management, putting one of the servers here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the things I have to look at, if it's a direct fiber link, yeah. if it's the media then it's not, other than leasing the line, they're not going to charge you for data, right? They shouldn't charge you for data because it's a direct yeah, line. It's, it's, um, if we're going back and forth, no, it's just because there's already a hookup in here and right. we're going back and forth. So what does that have to pay for the hookup at the plant? Right. So what I mean by that is let's say, let's say I use the cloud surface, a service, mm -hmm. right? So let's say as like, for example, the tank site, yeah, there's going to be information from the tank site that eventually needs to get into the SCADA system at some point in the future. There's many different ways I can do that. I could do it with radio, 
radio telemetry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can do that with uh, cellular, if there's cellular service out here at that particular site, I can get the information up to the cloud. And then from the cloud, there's uh, things called VPNs and public private networks. And then I can get that information here to the plant or over if there's reception uh, here to town hall or over to um, the site. But what they'll do is they'll charge you for data mm -hmm. if you go through the cloud. So the more information you send and transmit, the more money you spend. You have to get a bigger data plan, right? Everyone knows about data plans. But, but what I'm getting at here is if we have a direct physical fiber from the plant to here, it's just the hookup connection. The lease, since it's their fiber, there's a leasing cost. And a maintenance cost you'll have to pay on that, but they won't charge you for the data that's going back and forth because those redundant servers are going to be talking all the time. And there's going to be a lot of data. So you need a high bandwidth, you know, a large pipeline, if you would, to have that data go back and forth with that with minimal delays. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are, are you going to be overseeing this project? Yeah, if I'm the, if let's put it this way, if I I since I am the senior project manager, I oversee design mm -hmm. and then the construction aspect of it. Okay. Okay. All right. We review all pay requisitions, requests for information, the submittals, the whole nine. So change orders. Meetings. No, what are you asking of us tonight, or is this just information? Well, what, what my primary goal and objective here for Gordon was to at least get the design scope approved. Yeah. Okay. And if we can get that design scope approved, me and my team can get this done in two months. Now, this is also related. We have to get the design documents done and then DEP has to approve them or, or review them and get their input into it. And then it can go out the bid. So we're anticipating two months design, bid documents, uh, you know, questions, bidding, and then construction is roughly about 10 months. So like if I make a motion to proceed into the second phase of this. That yeah, what to the scope changes? Pardon? No, we're not under an action item for this. We're just under new business. I don't think we are making this any is, motions pertaining. So you're you're not, Mary. I think it's the water department's purview. Is yeah. it not? Right, as an enterprise fund, I think it's just yeah. There. Okay, so we so we're just they, they, information. This point mm -hmm. to show you where and how it's more. Yeah. yeah, because when when they originally talked about mm -hmm. this project, I came in kind of late on it because it's about the time that I came onto the water department and they were already they had already started working with this mm -hmm. and the original project was to upgrade this just to skate a system alone mm -hmm. but then when we came in and we, they came in with us and we went down to the plant we toured the plant we started looking they came in too and once we started to look at what we were got we had a lot bigger problems than just the SCADA system there were a lot of things that were being overlooked over a period of time. Um, I, I can't say it until it's anybody's fault or anything. It's just that things, like you said, as they get older and we just got used to using and working with them mm -hmm. and they just tried to make them work to try to keep the uh, cost of everything down. And instead, what we ended up getting is we started getting problems with DEP. We started getting all these different write-ups. And, you know, at some point, you got to say enough's enough. And right, it's public right. safety. You gotta, you gotta get out there and get ahead of it. Yeah. Okay. And so the next step is we want to get a capital plan going. Yeah. So that we can start to uh, figure out where we're going to be with our funding, so that we don't, we're not under this kind of a problem. This need. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any more questions. I think uh, they're not in a meeting. I thought you were having a joint meeting. Um, I guess that would be a joint meeting. I don't know. It's up to you guys. What's that? I don't think it's necessary right now. They have to move on along with the design portion of it. And they have to talk to the state to yeah. the DEP for came back to where we are with, with their funding. 
So really, then, correct, me, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys have a meeting on Thursday, right? Correct. Yeah. So maybe right. take it up then. <laughs> well, thank you for your presentation. No, it's great. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jim. My pleasure. Thank you for uh, for having. Uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate it, and we'll get uh, moving on those other uh, outstanding. Yeah. Ones. Okay. Perfect. Well, it's, it's you know we we listen to these guys, but they're laymen, you know, yeah. and uh, I it's nice to have a job. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to try. Yeah, about three out of four of us had water backgrounds. <laughs> so, which in, I think in the history of the water department. Yeah, it's a pretty solid water department right now. Absolutely. Brad, and, and Brad himself has got a huge yeah. water for a while. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I know. You guys got a lot on your plate. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, is there any other water department business that we should cover while you guys are here? I don't think so. We did the water operator and the okay. Great. It says Bruce Cooper, North Blanford water line repair issues. He's just not here. He's not. No, we we okay. decided that uh, we let it go to the water department first and let them solve it. You've decided, or he's decided? No, uh, the town administrator and I. Oh, figured okay. that we put our heads together. And... Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's not an act. All right, great. All right. Okay. Um. Why don't we move to the um. Eversource staging because I know we have some folks here. Yeah, for that. I think Lori's back there. So <laughs> um, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks again, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for You may actually have that email with the construction cost somewhere yeah. in your. I probably do. Well, yeah. I'll yeah. try and dig it up. Um, um, all right, Chris, do you have an update? Yeah, uh, really quick. So, Lori, unfortunately, I haven't heard back from our liaison since I talked to him last week. Um, you know, I, I asked him about them, you know, what the permitting process was for getting that staging area on Shepherd Road up. He has to look into that. Um, I asked him if they would be willing to pay for a traffic study to cover the speed signs. He also has to look into that. Um, he... Uh, I feel like there's one other item. Thank, Thank you. you. Drive safe. Oh, he did say if there are, if there's any if there's any damage to the roads from that incident, they can certainly cover the cost of that. And I wasn't certain if there had been damage or um, but he said, you know, certainly if if when that truck went into the ditch, if it left some serious issues with the road, they can cover that cost. Um, so we'll have to check that out. Um, but he, uh, unfortunately, I don't have more of an update than that. He's going to try and get back to me this week. He's just, he's a busy guy. So I was going to ask for a time frame. He said this week. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what are they trying to do? Um, were you going to ask him about um, Virgil Lloyd Road too? Oh, about reopening that? Yeah. Uh, they, they were going to so I, I talked to him about what they what is in their budget basically to do but you know they all have all these organizations have part of their budget dedicated to being a good neighbor and covering costs to the communities that they are working in and so I, I asked him if he could figure out you know what's what they could potentially offer out of that budget so we'll see when he he gets back to us yeah thank you okay thank you um, is there anything else where if anyone wants to leave? <laughs> I'm just trying to oh, do you want to be taken out of order? I would love that. Oh, maybe do our tax classification taxes, here. That's not the one. You, Sorry, I don't know, right here. Sure. Oh, the select board meeting somehow. And... Well, we're all in Dave's still. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Harold, got all the answers. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that ring. All right. Oh, welcome. So this is formal hearing. Yes. Do you need me to change? Do you need me to open officially open uh, yes. the hearing? It was okay. So uh well was it posted for a certain time or it's posted to follow the select board meeting. So maybe we can't take you out of order actually. You can resource to reconvene at date certain public vote? No. Uh no, we're not. 
oh, action items total on the tax classification rate? It's no, the so the tax classification rate is decided by the committee. Oh, okay. I misunderstand. I only reason I came here. Oh, thank you for coming. We always love when people come. <laughs> <don't. laughs> Right. This, this was misleading. I thought it was a public vote. No, we voted yearly, and to be honest with you, we typically stay within the the same. Um, so there, there's two different options. I'm not going to explain it well at all. Where we um, do a separate rate for commercial and residential, or yeah, we keep so it the same. same. We keep it the same every. I I don't foresee any changes this year. Um, so I don't think there'll be any surprises. Okay, so we can recess to the mark rate. Recess, uh, yeah. yeah. Or recess yeah. to mark yeah. hearing. But you're certainly yeah. welcome to say and listen. Um, yeah. that, but we're just talking yeah. about yeah. if we can take it out of order right because it's technically posted at the end. So what you have okay. to do is you got to. to do so we'll just meeting. Uh, we, we'll uh, then you can adjourn the meeting. Pause to and then to reconvene after. Okay. Right. So um, thank you for your your questions. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm just the. Weird circumstance that I came here. Yeah, that was perfect. I'm glad yeah, you participated. Thank you. Well, you're welcome to stay and listen to the, you know, what he has to say. We're going to pause. Um, so I'll make a motion to recess. Thank you. The meeting to reconvene after the tax classification hearing. Second. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. So uh -huh. now motion to open the tax classification hearing. Bye, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> it shouldn't take too long. No. As you know, it's uh, <laughs> the classification hearing is really kind of a perfunctory exercise uh, to, uh, in a small community like Blanford. Uh, it has historically uh, levied a single tax rate across all classes of property mm -hmm. uh, for all the same reasons. Uh, uh, we're going to recommend a similar. Okay. Uh, action, but there are a few highlights uh, that uh, I'd like to uh, speak to uh, very briefly. Okay. Uh, you should have this document. Uh, yes. Um, so, um, <clears throat> of the four major uh, categories of uh, revenue that come to the town, uh, including uh, local receipts like uh, motor vehicle excise. Uh, state aid and uh, even uh, uh, free cash. Property tax uh, represents uh, by far the largest mm -hmm. source of revenue to the town. Uh, we're looking at <clears throat> levying uh, $3,567,000 roughly, mm -hmm. um, which is about $234,000 more than last year in, <clears throat> in property taxes. That represents about a 7% increase in the the property tax levy. Um, another highlight, uh, we have tabulated $102,197,000 of well, new growth revenue, that's additional revenue uh, that comes to us uh, uh, through the construction of homes and mm -hmm. uh, all the garages and additions, but also uh, personal property and public utilities are getting in. A sizable amount of revenue uh, growth um, to, to the town. Is the 7% increase due to assessment values, or what is what is the cause for that? Well, um, you're going to tell me. So that's uh, that levy is established independent of what we in the assessor's office do. Okay. Uh, the town adopts a budget. Uh -huh. uh, that budget has uh, revenue underpinnings. Uh, um, sources, uh, defined sources to uh, fund that budget. Mm -hmm. So that um, that levy is driven largely by the budget and uh, the budget we have approved that to okay. the town meeting. Okay. So um, we, uh, we are anticipating a higher a property tax levy that of course will uh, translate into higher tax bills for the residents of the town. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I wanted to uh, also want to hear address um, <clears throat> uh, the fact that we as assessors are obliged uh, to annually revalue all properties in town. Mm -hmm. um, it's no secret to most people that uh, the market has surged, uh, even here in Blanford. Uh, we've seen a, a marked uptick in property values. That will now be reflected in our new assessments those assessments appearing in, in uh, people's tax bills in January. 
uh, on average, uh, residential property valuations are going up 14%. Um, averages are made up of highs and lows. So, so uh, you know, some people might go up a little less, uh, some a bit more. Um, with the uh, with the increase in values uh, and uh, the increase in the levy, we are anticipating uh, a uh, a reduction in the tax rate, and you'll see that on the next page. Um, our fiscal twenty two tax rate was fourteen dollars and seventy nine cents per thousand. Uh, that uh, is uh, estimated to uh, fall to thirteen dollars and sixty cents. So um, higher values, lower tax rate, higher revenue needs, uh, you're looking at uh, an average increase uh, to uh, a property owner uh, of about uh, 5% or $189. I noticed here, I didn't see this on my screen uh, or I would have removed that. There's, it's not a minus 189. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, on average about one hundred eighty nine dollar uh, residential tax increase. Okay. So I offer on the last uh, page uh, a motion that uh, can be uh, read into the record and adopted, uh, and essentially that uh, uh, motion uh, adopts the single tax rate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll take any answer any questions. If you have. I have so many questions, but I don't, but if they're not. I'm just trying to fully understand how the budget works. I've learned a lot in the last few years, but none that I that I need to ask right now. I, I guess I'll just come up with them as as they appear. No. Like in, in most towns, like we have. Uh, properties that aren't being lived in and uh, some are in tax taking and things like that. And then there's some houses that the banks own and uh, they come to us and they say, well, you know, the house is literally abandoned and we want to, you know, pay less taxes because we're not going to maintain it and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm thinking of uh, Julie DeRosa's house. Mm. You know, uh, I tried personally to con try and contact the bank to find out what their their uh, intentions are. And uh, they, oh, we'll get back to you. And then you never hear anything again. And is there a way that we can get them to, you know, do something? Because it, it's a blight on our town. Well, banks are rarely interested in doing anything to the property itself, to a derelict property itself. They would uh, just as soon find a, a willing buyer to take it off their hands and let them get yeah. with the uh, with any work that needs to be done. Um, but if they don't respond, this is my problem. My problem. Yeah. I don't know how to advise you there. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I was hoping maybe I would have. Secret formula there. Um, no, I don't really have any specific questions. I'll understand it, it better when we start to work on the budget. Um, well, the, the budget number is driven by our town uh, meetings. By, yes. And I'm then, just. And then revenue is, then, is driven by what happens at the state level. It, okay. That. Okay. And part of that is also due to school and when the school is going to get more or less. Mm -hmm. So all those things get together to come up with. The tax rate is going to be yeah. What, what the levy limit has to be because we have to raise that amount of money. Got it. And then you just put all the factors into the formula. Yeah. You know, what your property value is, what your tax levy has to go up to pay what you budgeted for the town, mm -hmm. and outcomes. Okay. Tax rate. Well, okay. that that's where you lost me because you said that the we're we're going the we're going to be thirteen dollars and 60 cents shorter but we're going to have an 89 dollar increase from all of that just so so if you have a hundred thousand dollar house and you have a tax rate of ten ten dollars yeah right you pay hundred dollars right if your house goes up to two hundred thousand dollars and you decrease your tax rate to five dollars you're still you're still paying a hundred dollars right 
That that part I understand. So, it's so just our tax rate is going down because our value of the property is going up. So you st you're going to be paying more on your taxes, even though you're per house. I'm going get down. what I'm taxed on for my house. <laughs> Okay. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I will make the motion. Blanford, uh, so we'll make a motion to uh, vote in accordance with MGL Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended, the percentage of local tax levy. Do I have to read the whole thing? Yes. Say as, as, written. as written. There we go. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. We appreciate it. Thanks for staying. Thank you for staying and listening to all our garbage. Oh. <laughs> well, no, it was interesting on one level. On the other, much of it went right over my head. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot for a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was a lot. Day is tough for a Monday. I just kept thinking like, that we just voted down the 180 for the highway garage, and right. I was feeling panicky. <laughs> because the town's not not going to vote for that. That's the yeah. amount of water. Yes. You know. Yeah, I know, I know, but I just kept thinking it's going to be another like, well, we need to this, all this money is going to that. And I don't know. And and the problem becomes the, the consensus. You don't have to Yeah, choice. yeah, yeah. And I look at Gateway, the, the consent order is going to cost our wealth. I mean, that's what all the wealth is because they said we can't use old land. It just makes me think we should just would we be better off if we were all using wells? <laughs> no, well, not in the summer of town, that's for sure. Mm. <sighs> we're all using wells, you have to have a sewer system. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. well, you've, you've actually made a very good point that I was wanting to make during that discussion about how it would be funded. It would have to be within the water enterprise and, and Anything that they can't raise in the way of grants and, uh, yeah. would, uh, have to be borrowed uh, by the enterprise and paid for by the rate payers. Yeah, which our rates just went up. I think they just went up like a few months ago. That's why my trade three water bills. Three water bills. That's right. I remember. I remember sending those three water bills. I'm very yeah. happy with my wealth. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Yeah. Be safe right. out there. Chris, we're back to you. All right. Make this quick. <laughs> and this was all the fire stuff I needed to sign in here? Yeah. So there's uh, there's two things there. One side of it is fire, the yeah. grants for the hoods and the, the air bottles. And I then the up. other side is an extension of the ADA uh, project. Yes. Okay. So we're all good there. Yep. Um, all right. Really quick. Uh, as I mentioned before, finance committee meeting on December 14th. That's this Wednesday. Um, so we'll... We'll do our regular finance team meeting and then have the finance committee meet afterwards. So that'll be a good chance for Kevin to kind of get up yeah. to speed on things. Uh, capital improvement plan. Um, I, I gave you guys a copy of our auto fleet. Uh, Collins Center is going to be taking that, uh, adding a couple columns. We're going to have our department heads fill it out to so we can have a better sense of the condition of our various vehicles. Yep. Uh, and then they can take that. Um, and basically come up with a, a plan for when we should be updating our fleet, uh, how frequently, what kind of vehicles, et cetera. Okay. So that's the next step on the CIP. Uh, we already talked about shared water, uh, ADA self-evaluation. Uh, I mentioned that there's an extension there. Uh, we should be getting our reports on the different buildings back uh, before December 30th. Uh, okay. And then we'll be able to hand that over to the Collins Center and they can use that to identify some of our needed capital projects. Uh, in terms of other departments, the fire chief, um, so I, I reached out to Chester. Their chief is part-time. He is going to be retiring this coming year. Okay. There is potentially an opportunity to collaborate there. Okay. Um, we're going to have to look a little further. I'm going to get the fire chief a, a draft uh, job description this week for him to review. Mm -hmm. And then, he, you know, I think the last time when Chief Motter was selected, there was kind of a convoluted process for getting mm -hmm. the the chief in place i don't know if he said there was something about um a recording of interviews being shared with the association and having association members yeah that's right interviews. you know who you should ask about that adam and dolby yeah okay. he was a part of that process um because i'm wondering if there's a, a slightly different way to do it where we just have the yeah. association 
choose somebody to represent them on a screening committee and yeah. then, you know we do a yeah. screening committee select board and that's it yeah uh, but just my thought um so yeah we'll more more to come on that after i talk to the chief this okay week. and then uh really quick uh last monday we had our yeah. new legislative delegation come uh it was very nice they had a great time just checking out all the sites to see in blanford they stopped by the uh gate at Cobble mm -hmm. Mountain Reservoir, got to learn a little bit about that problem. Um, and ultimately, um, you know, we're going to be working with them for, you know, earmarks, et cetera. Okay. Um, one thing the chief did want me to, or actually TJ, you brought this up recently, uh, the volunteer tax break, uh, volunteer firefighter tax break bill. Um, this is something that we voted at town yeah. meeting a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I'm going to reach out to uh, make Senator sure Mark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what to do on Calvin Mountain Road, but I think at least getting a meeting with BCAM would make sense. I don't know if we ever got that far with yeah. Josh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, to, for us meeting with DCAM? Yeah. Uh, we reached out. I don't know if they ever. I know they sent us. us a very short letter back. Yeah, I don't think they actually <laughs> met with us. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Good. Yeah, and I think that's it. And you already signed the plan, so I think we're good. Cool. Uh, now I'll get you the uh, VIN number for the flatbed trailer. That's yeah. Right if you want to write right on there and just yeah, drop, drop it off, I'll drop it great. off to you. Um, that's why at the pancake breakfast, someone mentioned to me uh, possibly pursuing grants to have um, an electric. Uh, car charging something oh, put somewhere okay. in the center of Blanford. Um, okay. That'd be way forward, but I thought, yeah, we're a green community. People are starting to purchase um, those vehicles and there's, you know, some, just some interest in us being a stop for charging. Yeah. So. Um, the West Springfield Library is looking for charging. Nice. Cars. Yeah. Cool. Now, how, how does that work? Is this going to be, you put your charge card in there and. You just plug it in. Who yeah, pays for the electricity? I think the problem is you're a library card holder. The I library know, pays for it? Yeah. I don't know. What, what? Well, well like uh, Big Y now, they have uh, at the little Big Y, they have the uh, two charging stations there. And the average time span to charge the car is between an hour and a half and two hours, mm -hmm. depending on, on the thing. Now, Big Y is picking up the tab for that right now, but do we want to start picking up tabs for? Well, we'd have to look into that and yeah. see how it would be. But if it was at least an option for people, it would be um, maybe if it was even just like a credit card situation where they paid for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Well, it's still vocational as one building. I went by there one Saturday. I see one car sitting there. I said, What is he doing? And I slowed down and looked. It's a charge. It's charging. Yeah. Uh, we're adjourned, 7 36. Um, and then if we, the other thought are the bikes, if we're going to.